In the last challenge, you were tasked with creating an enemy design from a very limited brief. How'd it go? Sometimes it's really fun to work without limitations. But in my experience in the game industry, it's actually really rare to work that way. While you were working on your brute design, here's the spider drone that Ryan assigned me. And I'm pretty happy with it, and I like the way it looks. I might polish it more, could clean it up, but I would call the idea part done. But what happens if the designers update the assignment? Welcome to episode two of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. And today we'll be challenged to update our designs. And this is something that happens constantly in commercial art. Some aspect of the project gets updated, and it just impacts other people. It's no one's fault, it just happens. Today, the enemy brief got a lot of new clarity, which means that we might need to start over, or at least do a big edit. I'm going to be demonstrating that with the spider drone, and then after my demo, I will show you the updated brute design, and you'll have some homework. So as you can see, the brief has expanded a lot. While before it was three or four bullet points that were just the functional requirements, now it's a big paragraph. It includes some narrative, some gameplay, and some physical description. And today's challenge that you and I will be doing doesn't require any drawing. Instead, the challenge that Ryan has given us is actually just breaking down the text into a short, useful list. It's a writing assignment. You can think of us as detectives. We're searching for clues. So let me demonstrate how I would do this, and then I'll send you on your way. If the goal here is to kind of find little bits of evidence and to arrange them for yourself to make your job easier, I like to start with categories. I use gameplay, visuals, and narrative. And more than likely, we're not going to be able to deliver absolutely everything that the designers are asking for. So I find it's really helpful to sort these visually before making any judgment calls. Now, because I recognize this is really hard for you to read because of the scale of the text, we're going to do a couple sentences at a time and break them down. The first one here is, it's the year 2145 and the oppressive military regime ruling over the United States has developed a new spider drone assassin to hunt down political dissidents. After years of researching nature's most deadly creatures, the government utilized cutting edge technology to reimagine a black widow in robot form. Now that looks like a lot of specific information, but if we break it down a little bit, what I see here is some narrative, which I'm going to be color coding orange, and a few visual details. So to put that on my sheet here, I'm just going to simplify a little bit. You could copy directly if you wanted, but I like to really ingest the long version and then write myself a short version. So for the narrative, I can simplify that to just say it's the future and there's an oppressive United States regime. For visuals, there were a lot of different descriptors given, but functionally we're just talking about a robot black widow that is high tech. Cool. Okay. Nice and simple. The next chunk here says to ensure it can scale any surface, it's built from extremely lightweight material that leaves it more vulnerable to direct attacks compared to its contemporaries in the drone army. However, what it lacks in defense, it makes up for in offense. Okay. This is interesting. I'll break it down here. I am hearing a specific gameplay verb. So here where blue meant physical description, green for me means gameplay. When I hear the word scale any surface, that is something that the player is going to experience. I can just imagine this robot right now climbing up a wall or hanging on the ceiling. That is something that the player is going to care about. The fact that it's made from lightweight material well, that's more of a visual description. So I'll put those here in their columns. I have climbs, walls, and ceiling, and then lightweight, vulnerable, offensively oriented. I'm trying to make these as clear and simple as I can so I can remember them later when I'm drawing. Moving on here, the spider drone's main attack is a venomous bite that gives its human prey 60 seconds to counteract the poison before it shuts down vital organs. Typically, this attack is preceded by an unexpected giant leap from the shadows. Each of its eight legs are comprised of powerful segmented pistons that enable it to jump up to three stories high. And when I sort through that a little bit, I hear that there is gameplay here. A main attack is a venomous bite. Okay, it does that. In the game, it's going to bite you. That's important. 
It also does a giant leap. That's gameplay too. From a visual standpoint, it's got eight fancy legs and it can also jump really high. So I go ahead and put those in here and I'm going to streamline a little bit and say it bites you, it jumps really high, and it's got eight legs. In addition to their bite, the spider drone is equipped with a low power laser mounted under its back to support ranged attacks when it's too dangerous to approach their prey. A silky compound is expelled from a hidden compartment that traps anything it comes into contact with. So here I'm hearing there is a laser, that's kind of a physical description, but the gameplay here, I, I want to keep coming back to gameplay. It has a ranged attack, that's the laser weapon, and then it also shoots these traps, or it puts traps down in some way. So we'll put those in our column here, ranged attack is a laser, creates traps, and from a visual standpoint, Ryan here is suggesting that the laser is under its back. Finally, the spider drone's advanced retinal system is fine-tuned to identify its target with extreme precision. This also happens to be where it's most vulnerable to player attacks. So what I see here is there is a visual description of this fancy eyeball that's going to be important, but the gameplay again is going to be it identifies targets, so it sort of does a lock-on thing of some sort, and this eye is vulnerable. Weak points are really important when you're designing enemies for video games, so we'll make sure we include that. I'm going to call that, it has sensor eyes for scanning and stuff, and it also has vulnerable eyes. And that brings us to the end of our list. So I've gone through this entire updated brief and turned what is a little bit intimidating, not very approachable for me as an artist, I look at this big wall of text, but I've turned it into something that is much easier for me to digest. It's sorted into categories, and within each category the items are clean and simple. For your homework, I challenge you to do the exact same thing, but you're going to be continuing with your brute design. A copy of this homework is available as a PDF. Just follow the link below. Now remember, you're not making judgments. You're not reading between the lines. You're just trying to carefully absorb the designer's intentions. And at the end of that, you're going to just have a list of requirements. So this is page one. It's a little bit longer, so I'll give you a sec to take a screenshot, and then I'll show you page two. And one more time, here's page one. So have fun with this assignment, take your time with it, and remember that writing can be just as important as drawing when it comes to design. But when you're finished, I'll see you in the next lesson.